Thanks for being with us on First Edition. There are renewed questions about Labor policy, direction and also costings after the embattled Shadow Justice Minister David Finney couldn't explain his party's position on the school kids bonus. This is Bill Shorten arrives in Darwin preparing to unveil some uh, announcements there in particular uh, and announcements on uh, tackling Indigenous disadvantage. Yes, Sky News political reporter Dan Borsch is travelling with the opposition leader. Joins us from Darwin, Dan. Uh, Bill Shorten's got a few issues. He's got to manage the, uh, the replacement, the person to succeed Nova Paris in the Senate, also to mop up after David Feeney once again. Yeah, he certainly has. Kieran Brook, good morning again. Bill Shorten has now begun his day here in the top end, his first day of campaigning here with a run. He's launched off with the NT opposition leader, Michael Gunner, and they're off uh, running around uh, the very warm city this morning, uh, getting a taste of the top end. But Bill Shorten will be returning to what are uh, mounting issues for him within his own party, particularly uh, these comments that we've now seen from David Feeney, who has been under some fire over his uh, not including a $2.3 million home on his list of interests. And when we, he was first asked, he didn't know if it was negatively geared. Now there are questions over his position on policy and spending of his party. Here he is. My advice to the coalition is perhaps they should start crafting and costing some policies of their own. Right, well, let's test because some of the figures they've put forward. Uh, will Labor keep the school kids bonus? The, the well, we've in term, the baby bonus. The school kids bonus. The, well, I, I, you'd have to refer to our relevant shadow. I've I've been a little um, distracted over the last few days. Well, they seem to be completely oblivious about what their commitments are. I mean, David Feeney, the, the, you know, the property baron of the Labor Party, has made it clear that he didn't know, he doesn't know whether they're going to bring the school kids bonus back or whether they're going to um, support the government in the decision we've already taken. Now, that's about four and a half billion dollars. Now, they've already said just as recently as March that they were going to bring the school kids bonus back. Now, if they're going to do that, well, that's four and a half billion dollars on top of what the current level of, of deficit is over the next four years. So that's certainly a distraction. Kieran Brook and Bill Shorten today will announce his $30 million plan to help tackle Indigenous disadvantage. Dan, we'll talk to you soon with us now. We've got the Resources Minister and Minister for Northern Australia, Josh Frydenberg. Uh, Mr Frydenberg, thanks very much for your time. I want to ask you first of all about this poll, Sky News poll that's found only 9% of those surveyed uh, believe that they will uh, think that the company tax cuts proposed by the government is an issue that will drive them to vote for the coalition. Is that a concern? Look, I, I don't think it's a concern because we know that reducing the company tax rate is actually good economic policy and will drive investment and jobs and growth. And Australia's company tax rate, Kieran, is too high at 30 cents in the dollar. Uh, it's well above what you see in other comparable economies like the United Kingdom where it's 20 cents in the dollar and Singapore and Hong Kong it's well below that and New Zealand has a lower company tax rate than us. And the Treasury uh, modelling has shown that for every dollar you cut in the company tax rate you boost economic output by four dollars. And of course, it's not just small businesses which will benefit from, the, uh, from the, the government's company tax cut, but also the larger businesses. Now, Chris Bowen himself, the shadow treasurer, wrote a famous or an infamous book, if you like, called Hearts and Minds. And he said that reducing company tax rates will actually boost jobs, boost investment and boost growth. So clearly, uh, when it comes to uh, Chris Bowen, his heart and his mind is with the coalition's policy, not Labor's. But nearly half of those surveyed in this Omnipol for Sky News says, uh, will say that education spending, more education spending, is, most, is the issue most likely to get their vote. That's exactly what Labor says. That's one, the Labor Party's key policy in this campaign. Are they more in tune with the electorate than you are? No, I mean, we are driving uh, further spending and uh, further improvements to our education system and our health system, but we're also being responsible economic managers and there's no magic putting of money out there and the Australian people do understand that. When I go out uh, to the marginal seats and campaign with my colleagues, people do raise the issue of debt and deficit and Bill Shorten is being made to account now uh, for, his, for his endless spending and, not for, and for, for opposing 
the government savings. And this is a core battleground in the election, Kieran, uh, that we have shown in the past um, that we can find savings, that we over time are bringing the budget deficit down substantially. Labor, on the other hand, are driving spending further and further up, as well as increasing taxes, and that's no way uh, to, to boost the economy overall. As the Minister for Resources and, and Northern Australia, I want to ask you about the comments made by your colleague Barnaby Joyce, the Deputy Prime Minister, where he linked last night in the regional leaders' debate the issue of uh, live cattle exports, the ban that was put in place, and then the subsequent influx of asylum seekers. How's that going to go down with our northern neighbour, this issue, the suggestion that they opened the gates basically when the live cattle trade was, uh, was stopped? Well, Barnaby Joyce was making the obvious point that uh, you don't go and insult a most important and critical neighbour as Indonesia by undermining their food security by banning, after a television show, a uh, $1.5 billion industry that creates 10,000 jobs and, as you say, most of which Has are he in just insulted Australia, them now? many of whom are in Indigenous. Well, no, because what he's made clear is that that live animal export policy that uh, the Gillard Labor government introduced, the ban on live animal exports, was a disaster. At the same time, we were seeking greater cooperation from Indonesia on the very difficult diplomatic uh, and strategic issue of border protection. Now, we've cleaned up both issues. One, we have uh, ensured that the live animal export uh, trade continues to strengthen and we provide food security to Indonesia. And also, Kieran, now we've got much better cooperation from Indonesia and we've been successful in stopping the boats when Labor was very unsuccessful. And, you know, you've got 30 uh, Labor uh, MPs or candidates who are disagreeing with Bill Shorten's policy on border protection. Bill Shorten just can't be trusted to ensure a strong border protection policy if he was ever elected to government. Well, on, on that issue, you, you refer to that, uh, we'll get to that in a moment, specifically Labor's commitment, but on the suggestion that the cooperation with Indonesia reduced as a result of the trade issue, isn't that an insulting thing to say about Jakarta? Won't that, are you sure that's going no, to go down in, well with the powers that be there? Look, it's not, it's, not, it's not insulting to Indonesia to say that uh, being a good economic partner is very important to the overall health of the relationship. And, and that's a point that Barnaby Joyce was making. And Labor failed on both counts. They failed on, in terms of the economic partnership because they undermined Indonesia's food security and they failed on the border protection issue. And that became an irritant in the relationship and obviously was a very graphic failure uh, here, here at home with many lives lost at sea, budget blowouts and obviously thousands of people, including children, in detention. Right. That was the Labor Party's record. That's now behind us. Now, we've seen that um, uh, the, the comments made by John Howard as well uh, overnight. He says that he doesn't trust Labor to maintain the government's border protection policies. He's chimed in again on this policy, which, of course, he was... For, at the forefront of over many years, but uh, what more can Bill Shorten do than say, basically, that they're supporting your policy? The turn backs, they're, they're backing it, uh, they are not going to let people smugglers start their trade again. It couldn't be more clear. Well, the point, you know, well, but the point is, no matter what Labor says, they can't be trusted on this issue because that's exactly what happened with Kevin Rudd and John Howard was making that point, uh, Kieran, that before the 2007 election, uh, Kevin Rudd says he'll stop the boats. Well, we know that he did anything but. He unravelled the strong border protection uh, processes that were in place and 50,000 unauthorised arrivals subsequently came and Labor had to open 17 detention centres. Now, the coalition has closed those 17 detention centres and you've seen during this campaign 30 uh, Labor candidates and members uh, at odds with, the, with Bill Shorten's position. And even, you know, the Labor Party's leader-in-waiting, Anthony Albanese, himself voted against Labor's, uh, you know, support for the turn-back policy at their own federal conference. Now, if a senior frontbencher such as Anthony Albanese can't agree with Bill Shorten, what hope do those candidates out there in marginal seats uh, have, you know, in terms of uh, holding the line with Bill Shorten if they were ever to get to government. 
Much has uh, been made finally on, on the, the comments of David Feeney on Sky News yesterday in relation to the, the school kids bonus. Um, the Labor Party is, uh, well, it says that it's, it is going to have all of its costings out there before this, this election campaign wraps up. That's entirely reasonable, isn't it, in terms of this policy and all of them, in terms of their numbers. They said they're going to be well ahead of what the coalition was when it was in opposition before the, the, the relevant elections. Well, it's not reasonable, as, as Scott Morrison has powerfully pointed out. This is a $4.5 billion commitment that Labor, you know, earlier this year was, was saying that they were going to uh, continue. Uh, now, we have made very clear our position. Uh, Labor has not made clear their position. Now, obviously, David Feeney is confused, as the rest of the Australian public is, about what Labor's position is. And, and, this, is, and this brings into sharp focus, Kieran, the fact that Chris Bowen, the alternative treasurer for Australia has said that he will release his economic plan a hundred days after the election. And Bill Shorten is continuing to make many multi-billion dollar promises as, as the campaign goes on. And I was stopped by one person in my electorate the other day who said the problem with Bill Shorten is that the bill never shortens. And that's absolutely right. It's not a cliche, it's the truth. This is a guy okay. who doesn't know how to get spending under control and that's going to be a big problem for Australia's economic future if the Labor Party um, um, ever got their chance in government. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Uh, Josh Frydenberg, Minister for Resources in Northern Australia, appreciate your time this morning. And uh, just uh, incidentally, I should mention that um, there have been various reports around this morning in relation to notes left behind by David Feeney after that interview on Sky News yesterday. Now, apparently they were left on a couch in a waiting area just outside of our studio. It's an area which is, uh, sees heavy traffic by MPs from both sides of politics throughout the day and the night. It's been reported on these uh, notes in all the papers this morning, in a number of the papers, I should say, those notes were not passed on to those papers or any other media outlets by Sky News.